right, welcome back. I wasn't going to post this video, but I figured it would help some people. You learn more from your mistakes than you do your successes. So I thought I would share this because when I did some research on YouTube to try to find out the best way to wax pot a pickup, I came up with some good videos, but they all left out some critical details that for me being detail oriented, wish they would have said or mentioned because I totally forgot when I started this process and you'll see what happened after this video. But I wanted, had a couple of things to explain. Somebody pointed out in the last video that I had uh, low volume in my audio coming out of the left channel and I couldn't figure out what was going on because I hadn't changed anything. Well, this is all new technology. You can see my little uh, Go, uh, Rode Wireless Go 2, which is a dual system, and it has mono and stereo. Well, somehow I had it set up in mono, which puts it to the left channel. I don't know. I must have just pushed the button inadvertently, but uh, I've got that fixed, and that was one reason I'm doing this video, is to show uh, you know, I'm still kind of learning the new technology you wouldn't think you would get behind but some of this stuff is not so clear cut but either way here's my go transmitter the second one has the little wind sock on it and hopefully it's not distorting that's the built-in mic then i have this lavalier that's right here which you can't take off so right now i'm going through both the lavalier and the uh, transmitter too so let's see. Let's let's uh, mute transmitter two. Now it should be coming out of the left side. So let's put it back on. And for the lavalier, I'll mute it down here. All right. I should be coming out of the right side. Hopefully, this is working. Now I'm stereo. But one thing I did realize, and I learned from my mistake, was that. I might be able to get a good stereo recording just with these little mics for my guitar. So I'm going to try that. And this uh, unit has gain control. You can lower it minus 6 decibels or minus 12 or is it 12 and 24? I don't know. But when it gets loud, I should be able to lower the, the gain and maybe get a pretty good uh, recording. And it's stereo so I can move these around wherever I want. But Okay, back to the potting. Aaron sent me the correct instructions. Aaron at Rumpelstiltskin, he's been a he's been an angel trying to help me fix this thing. And it hasn't been easy. Either way, you'll see what happened in the video coming up. But uh, he sent me the correct instructions in an email and I didn't read them quite. I misread them. And it caused me to destroy the pickup. And I don't want that to happen to you guys. And one th another thing that came out of this mistake was I started thinking, I, what, in my research on YouTube or the Google, was that a lot of the new pickup manufacturers just soak these pickups in wax. I assume it's to keep them from having any microphonic problems and, and squealing but it also deadens and takes the life out of a pickup. And that's what I learned from playing the unpotted pickup. It's fine if you don't turn up a high gain pedal. You can play it all day long with a regular amp and just uh, volume on your guitar and your amp. But as soon as you kick in that gain, it'll start squealing. So... Uh, I was thinking, you know, the old pickups probably have very minimal wax potting and some of them don't have any. And I'm thinking, well, maybe that is the magic because I heard it. It's very touch sensitive without the wax. Very uh, cool sounding. It's hard to explain. Uh, hopefully you could hear some of it in that last video. But uh, like I said, I was coming out of the left channel. And so I thought, well, maybe you can take these new pickups and melt the potting out of them and then repot it or just check it to see if it sounds better and I've maybe opened up a whole new can of worms 
don't start it, but I'm thinking about maybe putting a pickup in an oven for a, at 150 degrees. Anything over that will damage it. That's what you melt the wax at. And let it sit there for a little while and see if you can get the wax to run out. It may be a really bad idea, but I'm always experimenting. Either way, like I said, Aaron had sent, he sent me the instructions and he says, once the wax has liquefied on the pickup, then you time it 30 seconds to get just a minimal amount of wax into the coil. So I forgot all of that. I dropped it in. The wax hardened on the pickup immediately. I waited 30 seconds, pulled it out, and it was like a, I was making a candle or something. And then I panicked. I said, oh my gosh, I can't play the pickup like this. It's it's just a blob of wax. And it, all the videos say, okay, now clean off, carefully clean off the wax. Well, here I am trying to get maybe an eighth of an inch of wax off the wire, the coil, the bobbins, everything. Magnets. And when I panic thinking, oh, I got to get this stuff off before it gets really hard. There's no way I can leave it on there. Uh, you'll see what happened. Anyway, the pickup's on its way back to Aaron. He said, well, you want to try it again now that you know what to do? I said, no way. You pot it this time. But really, I'm going to start doing some research into this uh, minimal wax potting and see if it's possible to improve by depotting a pickup and repotting it or just depotting it and hoping that uh, some of the wax residue remained behind and play it and see if the pickup sounds better. I have a feeling it could improve it, but don't start doing it until I figure this out. I've got a, a question into Aaron to see if he's tried it or thought about it. Anyway, that's my explanation. I'm playing the guitar right now. This has turned out to be one of my favorites, or if not my favorite. I put this on there because I've got a few little pieces of tape and stuff that I don't want falling out of the hole. But I can still play these two pickups. I just got to wait for this one. And it was sounding great. So I was sick. But when you have a microphonic pickup, if you can get it to where it won't squeal when, it's, uh, when you're playing your fuzz or a high gain amp or a high gain pedal, then I think that fine line of getting it to not squeal, but not so much that it deadens the pickup, takes the life out of it, that's where you want to be on this potting. But do some research, it's pretty interesting. On to the disastrous potting video. Okay, this is the beginning of the potting process. I got my pickup right here, but I was torn. I, I'd, I'd, read where Lindy Fralin actually stopped using beeswax because he thought it sounded better with just standard paraffin. And I kept studying and studying. I think Seymour Duncan, most everybody uses an 80-20 mix of beeswax. And I put the beeswax in there just because it gives the wax a little more flexibility. It doesn't get so brittle, and I'm thinking, yeah, maybe I, over the years, if the wax breaks it down, because it's so brittle that you know, I just have to do it again. So I went for the beeswax, but I'm not going to be at 80-20. I'm probably more like, this is two ounces of beeswax in 16 ounces of paraffin. And it's right now at about... 158, 156, 158 degrees. I'm just trying to quickly melt this beeswax. I just threw it in there. Got the pickup ready, and and Aaron told me to just dip it for about 30 seconds. Like I said, the microphonic character of the pickup is actually beneficial and sounds better. And and they'll, everybody will say if you over pot a pickup, it'll just sound dead and lifeless. So the, real, the art part is getting it to where it just barely uh, causes the uh, feedback to stop. 
and but still has the uh, touch sensitivity that you like without the wax and I noticed it and I don't really want to lose that but if the pick when the pickup starts to feed back it actually takes away from some of the tone of the pickup so it's a really a fine line I think but I'll dip it here as soon as this wax melts oh and also I wanted to point out that I was trying to figure out how to protect this signature and this penciled in date. So I'm going to take some grease. Nobody has done this, but I'm going to take this food grade grease that I use, Super Lube, put it over those two spots just to keep the wax off, and hopefully it doesn't damage the uh, signature and the date. Either way, it's going to have wax or, or smeared grease on there. We'll see what happens, but it might have come up with something good here. All right, the beeswax is melted. I don't know if you can see this, but it's still at 150, I don't know, 155 or so, and I'm waiting for it to get down below 150. If it gets down to 140, it starts hardening on the top. So there's a fine line between dipping and not dipping. But everybody says 145 to one, well, 140 to 145, up to 150. And do your research because I guess certain pickups, you can damage them with the heat. So you just have to be careful. But as far as I can tell... I'm just going to dip this baby in there for 30 seconds and it's cold so the wax will coagulate or harden on it right away as far as I can tell and then the pickup will heat up and then the wax will get in there but uh, hopefully it doesn't take more than 30 seconds because I'm only going to do it for 30 seconds or a minute at the most and the standard dip or potting time is 15 to 20 minutes but I'm trying to keep from killing that touch sensitivity that I experienced with the unpotted pickup all right it's just at about 150 let's see what it is it's about 148 so we're gonna live with that all right here we go should be a simple operation To it there. All right, counting down. You can see that the wax is uh, has cooled on the. It hasn't heated up enough to melt everywhere. It hasn't even been thirty seconds. That's my timer. I can see that it's. Can you see that it's starting to melt on the bobbin? So, all right, it's been 30 seconds already. And the coil is still covered in wax, but we'll call it good for now. I gotta get over there and wipe it off. Paper towels. Apparently, it takes this stuff about an hour, uh, not an hour, a half hour or so to, to harden. See, that's a lot of wax. I don't understand that. Oh, here we go. Slowly coming off, but I don't know if any wax got in there. Yeah, this isn't a whole bunch of fun here. Hmm. I may end up destroying this thing if I'm not careful. Hmm. I don't know if it ever even got in there. You can kind of see that it all just coagulates. And to get it off, you kind of have to peel it off. I don't really want... I wonder if they leave them in there for so long. I would be surprised if this does anything. Oh, well. 
a real pain because then you got to install the pickup, go try it out, see what happens, and do it all over again if it doesn't work. It's having a hard time getting this stuff out of there. And kind of taking a big risk here. thought it was going to be, especially 30 seconds. Looks like my grease worked well. All right, well, you get the idea. Let's see if I did the did a good job. All right, I don't know if you can see, but it I'd be surprised if the wax got in at all. We just have to test it. Well, this is what happens when an amateur tries to do this. They make it sound like it's easy. They forget to tell you about the fine wire that comes off the coil that goes to the lead, which I totally forgot about because you can't even see the darn thing. I totally forgot about it when I was trying to get that wax off because it was so thick. I broke that little wire right there. See, it is like a hair right here. So it's destroyed. Yeah, I'll just post this because I don't want you guys making any of the same mistakes. And that coil is a lot more sensitive. I mean, I can see where I actually dented it from just trying to get the wax off. And I don't think there's any way I can connect that one wire. Either way, back to the drawing board. Oh, oh, oh.